So what you're looking at now is a woodcut I did. Uh, the, the local library here in Cleveland downtown has this neat like cutter laser etcher machine thing. Uh, and so I've had a little bit of time this summer. So for some of my bigger web design clients, I've been doing this kind of uh, thank you gift for them, um, which involves these really detailed line art isometric drawings. And so this is the finished product right here. Um, and last week I posted a speed draw video of what it took to, to make this. So today what I have here is I wanted to do a commentary version of it uh, so that I can kind of walk through it. A lot of people had some questions. Um, even I have some questions. So this is partially for me to kind of go through my process and, and figure out how I can do it faster. One of the really cool things about posting that artwork last week, the speed draw of it, is there were several comments where people were like, like asking me, hey, uh, I noticed you're not using a lot of Pathfinder tools that might speed you up, or, or people were telling me about uh, making actions and how those actions can help, or just understanding the math behind it and, and speeding up this process. So part of the reason I'm doing this commentary is twofold. One, to kind of share my knowledge of what I learned when I was going through this. And two, it's for you guys to be like, dude, there's a much faster way to do this. And I've already gotten some of those tips. Uh, and I know that I'm gonna be doing some cool stuff uh, and, and hopefully faster because of that. So, so anyway, yeah, I'm gonna just jump into the speed draw now and kind of walk you through some of the pieces parts and some of the things I was thinking about. So it started off with me making the grid. The grid itself that we have here are just a bunch of lines in Illustrator. And uh, I drew them at 30 degrees. Um, so that's at a 30 degree angle. Um, and, and then I duplicated the line and then I grabbed the two lines and I duplicated those lines and I copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. And then I could go back and I select all of those lines and I evenly distribute them using the kind of distribute icon doohickey. And then I duplicate them, I flip them so that they're going negative 30 degrees and that makes kind of the isometric grid that I'm using here. Once I got that done, I didn't really know what I was going to do next. I knew that this was for a client and they have an awesome logo uh, designed by a guy named Matt Yao. I think he's out of Atlanta. He does phenomenal work. He's done the logo for another client that I have. Um, love his stuff and I love the refinery logo. So I knew I was gonna start with that and I was thinking I wanted to do something with buildings and I wanted to do something with the logo and maybe the logo would make up the buildings and that sort of thing. So my first step was to vectorize their logo. And you can see here, there's a lot of goofy stuff going on. I was trying to figure out how to automate um, the isometricness of this. Um, and what I mean by that is that it has to kind of lay flat on the grid. So when you see it bouncing around, I'm trying to figure out the math to make it lay flat on top. I end up failing at, at doing that um, because I didn't know the specifications and I Googled and I looked it up. And, and actually, after I posted the speed draw, someone actually gave me the, the arithmetic to do it, which was extraordinarily helpful. I wasn't shrinking it down first. I needed to shrink it, I think, like 80.6% height to 100% width. I won't go into the math too much here, but uh, that was the step I was missing. So I ended up moving it to Photoshop, where I could then stick it on my grid and manually make it the way I wanted to pulled it back into Illustrator. And that's what you're seeing here is I'm making it 3D. And then once I got going, I thought, you know, this has to be line art because if I get a laser etch this onto wood. Uh, so I took the colorful version and I made it this kind of line art version. So now I'm taking it and I'm making it into the first building. And I'm doing a lot of experimenting here. This is the first of the several illustrations that I've done for this. So I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure out, hey, where are these buildings going to go? I'm just drawing a bunch of shapes and making windows and doing that sort of thing and placing them on here. Um, and I'm just getting a feel for it and, and figuring this out. I also realized looking at this, the drawing angles, I drew one little angle in there, it was really hard at the beginning um, because I haven't done a ton of these like isometric illustrations yet. And so getting that to feel natural to me was really difficult. Here I am positioning the logo and the text for this logo. I know a much, much easier way to do this now. Um, but at the time I didn't have it. So as you can see, I'm going in here and I'm actually blocking off the logo and kind of tracing it and going in there and noodling away at all those little details. 
And then once I have the boxes for the logos in there, I'm I'm doing like a pathfindery thing and I'm merging those shapes because they're just shapes laying on top of each other. I merged them together and then I flipped it around. So instead of being a solid brownish color, it's then just has the black outline and nothing in the middle. And then I duplicated it, pulled it up, and now I'm adding the little lines to kind of give it that 3D effect. And it's now part of the top of a building. And then I jumped over to drawing trucks. Um, I was kind of scatterbrained about this. I just kind of thought I want to draw a bunch of elements and get it in there. I also knew that I wanted it to be super detailed, but I didn't really have, you know, a core idea of what the layout was going to be. I figured I'd just keep noodling about as, and figure it out as I went. So this truck, one of the things I learned uh, later on is that uh, I'm putting way too much detail into this truck. Um, it looks neat when I show it here, but when I shrink it down, uh, it had way too many details. So like what I etched it or even kind of zoomed out a lot of those like indentations along the side of the truck and stuff, they looked like a really thick black line and a really thick black line just stood out way too much in this illustration. Um, it called your attention to it and I wanted all the lines to look similar with. So one of the things that I'm learning as I'm going through this is that I need to space out my lines, like even in those windows I just showed. Oh, here we go. I also had this idea somewhere along the line that I wanted to do this kind of side uh, hatch line thing. I ended up scratching that uh, for much the same reason. It was too much detail and it was distracting a little too much. Here I am drawing a fountain and trees and getting some of the details in. What's funny is if I was going to do this again, I don't think I would noodle the details early on. I would block in all my buildings and block in my roads and block in that sort of thing. Because what I found is, yeah, I'm hiding like windows and taking out points and things like that, that I was doing it before I really should have. I should have blocked in the buildings and then thought, okay, now it's hidden because I ended up drawing more buildings and that ended up hiding some of the trees and I shouldn't have drawn those trees and edited those trees and windows in the first place. So that was another thing to kind of live and learn. Now I'm making icons. They're a web design company and I do a lot of contracting for them. Um, so I do some like UX and UI design. I work with software teams. I really like working with software developers and so that's what these guys do. They they build software. They do some some good graphic design type stuff too. So I wanted to kind of capture some of that like webby sort of thing. And so for like the Twitter and the Facebook icons, I just I just pulled those off the web and made them line art. Now I'm kind of getting the hang of this and you can see I'm going in and I'm just blocking things off. I'm not I get some details in there, but for the most part, oh, now here I'm going into detail. Um but for the most part, I'm just like kind of getting some of the buildings in. I'm getting some of the elements together. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how this thing will look. And now I'm like, how big is this thing going to be? I knew it was going to be 12 by 12 square. So that green box that I put around the entire thing is, is really just defining the space. Yeah, here's where I'm changing the windows and stuff. Because this is one of those things where as when I zoomed out, the original windows that I put into those buildings were too detailed. And uh, a lot of that detail was coming out when I zoomed out was looking like thicker lines and I didn't want thicker lines. And I, I moved my fountain and I moved some of the shrubbery around. And again, this goes back to the, I shouldn't have been doing that detail so early in the piece. I should have got the structure in place because I ended up having to edit a lot of it. But you live and learn. Uh, I've I've finished a second piece and got it to a client. I'm probably going to post that later. They're kind of a, a startup and they're not public yet. So I'll probably wait a couple months before posting that one, but I've captured that whole process too. And that one went way faster and I learned a ton from doing this one first. Yeah. Just kind of getting in here now I'm making the boats. I made a lot of shapes and I reused a lot of those shapes. And as you can see what I'm kind of doing in here, is I'm jumping in and I'm erasing a lot of lines. So you'll see I'll move stuff into place and then I'll add points. So if there's a line behind, say, the crates on the boat, I'll add points to that line and then delete the middle point. So I'll add a beginning point and an end point 
delete the middle point. And that's kind of how I did this whole thing. I didn't use the Pathfinder much because the Pathfinder is really good for solid shapes and my shapes were transparent. Uh, I didn't have, I wasn't using big blocks. Um, I'm kind of curious because I was talking to a guy in the comments last week about that and he had some good pointers and, and, and I went and looked up some tutorials on how to do that. So I might try the Pathfinder thing a little more. I've used it for some stuff. What the Pathfinder does is it lets you say you have um, two solid objects that overlap. You can use the top one to cut into the bottom one or you can combine them into one shape. That's what, that's what the Pathfinder and Illustrator does. Here I am making more buildings, smokestacks, duplicate a boat. It feels really good to draw a great boat and then just copy paste it and flip it. Cause that's like instant speed. This I remember being kind of, I was trying to make a crane. And it's funny how little details like this can take a long time. And then other details like just, Hey, I'm going to put a bunch of crates in here. I've just flipped those out in no time at all. I ended up duplicating a building a lot, like the building that's kind of in the top middle. And then the one, I just showed, it's hard to see because I'm zoomed in, they're the same building. And I ended up moving the same building down below because looking at it at different angles, you can't really tell that it's uh, that it's the same exact building. And there's so many details, you know, you don't need it. I also added grass. Now I'm in the fiddle phase. Add a lot of grass, make the smokestacks higher. Uh, design and development company, so I'm adding that to the smokestacks. Here's the crane. Um, this was kind of fun. This was fiddly too, where I'm using block shapes. You probably saw those colored shapes there. I used those as spacers because I wanted it to be consistent as I went up. I wanted the spacing between kind of those angled things in the crane to be equidistant. So I made a shape as kind of like a guide and then I deleted them. There we are again, make the top of the crane. Man, I'm getting getting kind of thirsty watching this. Yeah, and, and this is all basic shapes. And and someone told me that this takes a lot of skill, and I, I almost disagree. I think this takes a lot of patience. <laughs> but but the skill is kind of like once you get the basics down, this type of thing is just a matter of being excruciatingly patient and being able to point and delete and and add lines and things like that. Another question somebody asked me as I was uh, showing this last week was what tablet did I use to put it together? And I didn't use any tablets at all. Um, Illustrator is, I'm at my most efficient anyway in Illustrator when I'm just using the mouse and the keyboard. I use a ton of keyboard shortcuts. I'm always like holding down the, uh, I think it's the option button to duplicate. Uh, it's the shift button to move things on a straight line. And this this particular drawing had a lot of me moving stuff around on a straight line, so it's holding the shift button. I was copying and pasting a ton. Um, the keyboard was my best friend on this. You know, um, I didn't use a lot of snapping to the grid. Uh, I just kind of was using my eyes to figure it out where everything needed to go. Yeah, now I'm duplicating trucks. Duplicating this building again, using the same windows. Yeah, now I'm making like this little square area. This was the hardest part of the whole thing. They used to have, before they got their cool logo, they used to have this uh, little walking dude. And um, they called him Big Boy because he looked kind of like the Bob's Big Boy guy. And so I found that and I tried to create him in 3D. And after kind of doing this stuff isometrically and using math this whole time, and all of a sudden having to kind of free draw this little statue character. That was hard. That was really hard. Uh, but it all came together. This is the fun part because now I'm just adding a bunch of cars. And this goes quick. It's like pop, 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 pop. Just keep duplicating cars and adding them in here. And then I made a second layer underneath the cars. I duplicated the cars. And I made them all white. Actually, I'm going through there. Yeah. I made the background of the cars white and you can see me, I'm using blue so I can see it, but there's a white layer underneath the cars. So that way I don't have to go and delete where the cars overlap in the buildings. I can just go, I just have that white layer behind the cars. So that saved me a ton of time too. Um, 
So that was kind of fun. I'm doing the same exact thing with the trees as I did the Pathfinder tool, broke them all down, and did it that way. And so this is a finished illustration. There is a ton of detail in here. Um, and it was fun. I, I'm really, really excruciatingly happy with how the woodcut turned out and how all this stuff came together. Um, some somebody asked me if I wanted to, if I could do a tutorial, and I thought it would be kind of fun. And actually, when I started recording this, I thought it'd be fun to do a tutorial. But I realized that this is way, 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 way too detailed for a tutorial. At least the kind of like I'd want to do a good tutorial. So I might put together like an isometric 101 tutorial some point down the road and throw it on Udemy or something, which would be fun. But it's going to be a lot, lot simpler than this because going through how I made this, like I would have to, it would take hours and hours and hours. Um, it would take a lot of work just to put that together. So that's the illustration. Hopefully this commentary answered some questions. Um, it, and hopefully I covered some of the questions you guys had in your comments last week. I had a blast doing this probably sometime next month or the month after. I'm going to have another one of these to post. Um, I love doing vector stuff, so I'm going to have more in the future. And I'll talk to you guys later.